Skaters. If you know anything about Basquiat, or even if you don't, he was notorious for making references to jazz musicians in his paintings and poetry. I'm talking about pieces like this one right here, horn players. Now, in order to understand the meaning behind it all, you gotta know who these jazz cats were. In one of his notebooks, Basquiat himself emphasizes that to really get, understand the depth, beauty, genius of an artist, one must have some knowledge of the media. Then he goes on the list of game changers in jazz. Duke Ellington, Cab Calloway, Ben Webster, Louis Armstrong, I mean, you name it. But there are two cats listed on here who were kinda like the leaders of the pack. My idols, Charlie Parker and Dizzy Gillespie. And as we can see here in Horn Players, one of Basquiat's most famous paintings, he focuses on these two kings in bebop. In the upper left, Charlie Parker, whose nickname was Bird, holds his alto saxophone, while Dizzy Gillespie appears on the right with his trumpet. But we've got to ask ourselves, what was so special about these jazz, more specifically, bebop musicians? Well, bebop was a type of jazz originating in the 1940s, but it was really an intellectual movement. It broke away from the norm of what black musicians were expected to play as jazz musicians. Charlie Parker was sick and tired of being treated like a second-class citizen because of the color of his skin. So one of his goals in ushering in this new wave of bebop players was to put a stop to the whole, you gotta entertain me, you're a black jazz musician thing. As the godfather Quincy Jones says, all the black music comes from a sociological source. Big band, bebop, doo-wop, hip-hop, and laptop. It all stemmed from what was happening culturally, environmentally, and politically at the time. Basquiat was consistently aware of the racist ways in which he was being pigeonholed. And so we found a lot of parallels between his treatment as an artist and that of his jazz heroes. On one hand, these jazz musicians were incredibly celebrated and hailed as some of the greatest artists of their time. But as soon as they stepped off stage and put their trumpets and saxophones down, they were once again reduced to the color of their skin. They literally had to enter through the back entrances to clubs that profited off of their names. In a similar fashion, Basquiat was always very conscious about his place as a young black man in a predominantly white art world. The critic Greg Tate wrote that no area of modern intellectual life has been more resistant to recognize and authorize people of color than the world of serious visual arts. Quincy Jones once told me this crazy story how he and jazz singer Little Jimmy Scott had to sleep in the funeral parlor next to dead bodies in caskets because they weren't allowed to stay at a white hotel near the venue that they was playing. Although doors were opening a bit more when Basquiat was coming up as an artist in the 70s, after Jim Crow laws were technically off the books in 1968, that didn't mean the racist mindset of the public had gone out with it. There was no way you could divorce jazz music from the musician's treatment in society. And Basquiat felt the same with his art. Basquiat once told an interviewer that he painted from, quote, 80% anger, and he was devoted to bebop as it was a restlessly inventive genre, unable to be put inside of a box no matter how hard outside forces tried. Another way that he explicitly addressed the racism he experienced was by listing the products that historically have been created with black labor and bodies. For example, if we take a look at Beef Ribs Longhorn, he addressed that directly. It's evident that even after he was catapulted into the spotlight and making more money than he could ever imagine, he was consistently reduced to the likes of a kid who simply made cartoonish paintings rather than on the level of a true intellectual artist. The canvas was where he could create freely, without judgment, freely create a world that reflected his own, next to the type of world he longed to see. If you want to see a respectable black man in the media during the 50s, 
60s and 70s. Your best bet was to turn to either jazz musicians or boxers. Basquiat knew that these were the men who were revered worldwide for their creativity, style, and talent. So he frequently painted his characters as kings, athletes, and warriors. This offset the narrative that critics created, painting him as this over-sexualized black man which detracted from his actual talent and intellect. Art critic Hilton Kramer once described Basquiat as a talentless hustler, street smart, but otherwise invincibly ignorant, who used his youth, his looks, his skin color, and his abundant sex appeal to win fame. We also frequently see the juxtaposition between the normal exploitation of black bodies in mass media with his literal anatomical translation of the human body. His fascination with the human body was most notably credited to an event that happened to him when he was seven years old. He was out playing softball in the streets of East Flatbush, Brooklyn, and was hit by a car leaving him with major injuries. Later in the hospital, after doctors removed his spleen, his mother bought him a copy of the book, Grey's Anatomy. His time spent with this book while in recovery proved to be formative, because judging by his art, his visual language appears to derive from an obsession with the interior design of the human body, rather than exterior. His improvisational style in art was reflective of his improvisational style in music. As the former leader of Grey, his experimental art noise quartet, along with his role as the producer of the single Beat Bop by K. Rob and Ramelsey, and as a DJ at venues like Mud Club and Tribeca. Against the backdrop of the cultural experimentation of the 70s and 80s, it was a period of discovery with the improvisation at the steering wheel. Just as Charlie Parker had come to the place where he abandoned the traditional melody for improvisation, Basquiat felt he could really do anything he wanted with no rules and no regulations. I could relate because when I create, I become a mirror of things around me and just reflect them back on them. I feel like that's my job to inspire and to record the times as an artist. Coincidentally, Basquiat was an inspiration for the cover of my album, Dinner Party. And beyond my personal inspiration, you can see the influence he's had on popular culture from The Weeknd, to ASAP, to Swiss, to Jay-Z, to Michael B. Jordan, to Doc Martens, to Coach. When I think of Basquiat, and I'm going around looking at all these different paintings, I can't help but to feel free. I also can't help but to feel he left a message for us. Oh,